Hello, my name is Lydia Radin and I'm a federal whistleblower. I was a medical student at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. I discovered among a number of criminal schemes that my medical school is defrauding the state and federal taxpayer and me in a federal student loan program. In a few simple documents, I'm going to show you how my medical school lied to steal money from me and the taxpayers. And I discovered another victim named Mike Tyberg. We did everything we were supposed to do to try to work with the criminal justice system. Instead of helping us, they protect the school. Um, I asked, for, I was a student at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. I matriculated in 1994. The school gave me a hard time during my two years there. It took about a year and a half to expel me illegally without a fair hearing. I was forced to sue the school in federal court to try to get access to my complete unedited records. I've never gotten access to my complete unedited records and this is an issue today. Today my medical school is having the federal government send me threatening letters that say if I do not pay for classes the school never provided then the federal government will take adverse action against me. The federal government has already illegally declared me in default on a federal student loan I was not eligible to receive. Because they falsified my enrollment status at the school, they also took a TAP grant, a, a tuition assistance program grant from the state government. These are your state tax dollars that I was not eligible to receive. They also falsified my eligibility in a federal Pell Grant program. These are federal tax dollars. Um, these are your federal tax dollars. I was not eligible to receive a Pell Grant in my second year. I discovered another victim, his name is Mike Tyberg, and the same criminal scheme, the same scam that they ran on me, they ran on Mike Tyberg. So in a few simple documents, I'm going to show you how my school lied to steal money from students and from taxpayers, and it's wrong. This is a copy of my, um, this is a copy of a promissory note. And this is how the scam ran. In 1995 to 1996, I was not a full-time student. I was in something called a decelerated program, where I was taking classes spread out over a longer period than most uh, medical school students. Part of what I was doing this year was original clinical research at Long Island Jewish Medical Center. My meritorious hospital performance evaluation has been deliberately kept off the record, off my educational records. My educational records are falsified, my financial records are falsified, my medical records are falsified. Again, to this day, my rights under federal law, under FERPA, Federal Educational Rights and Privacy Act, are being violated. I have never gotten my complete unedited records. I also have rights under state law to have my transcript be accurate. My transcript, my academic transcript at this school is also inaccurate. This is a promissory note that I discovered through Freedom of Information Act requests in June of uh, 2006. I was compelled to sue the school in federal court and the judges in the Southern District will not uphold the law. In May of 2005, Judge Patterson ruled against me. In June of 2005, I discovered this document. This is an intentionally falsified promissory note. I was not a full-time student during 1995 to 1996. This is how the scam worked. Lloyd Greenberg, who's the authorized school official, asked me to come to the, to the, uh, the school's financial aid office. Now it's called the student finance office. This is the promissory note I was asked to complete. I only filled out part A which is your name, two references, your name, your address, your contact information, two references whose names I've redacted here for their privacy. And then you ask how much money you want, you sign and date it. So I filled out part A. Then the promissory note, I should also tell you, as I was filling this out, Mr. Greenberg stood over me and bullied me. I tried to ask questions, he refused to answer them. That's illegal. The, the school finance officer, or the authorized school official, Mr. Greenberg, the school student finance officer, is supposed to answer questions when students ask about their borrowing. 
So I filled out Part A. Then this document was taken away from me. I never saw it again until finally in June of 2006, I traveled up to the State Guarantee Agency. That's the State Guarantee Agency is the Higher Education Services Corporation. They're responsible for making sure that these things don't happen. And in June of 2006, with witnesses, I sat down with Cheryl Fisher, the supervising attorney, and we went through how the school committed fraud. So again, in 1995, in September of 1995, I was asked to come to Lloyd Greenberg's office. I was bullied into completing part A of the promissory note, and then the promissory note was taken away from me. That's not legal. Before a student leaves the student financial aid office or the student finance office, the completed promissory note is supposed to be put in the student's hands so the student knows what's going on. After Mr. Greenberg took this promissory note, Mr. Greenberg, uh, as the authorized school official acting for the Einstein School of Medicine, um, after he took this promissory note away from me, he completed Part B. Part B of the promissory note is here. Mr. Greenberg is the authorized school official. He checked in box 21, I believe it is, that I was a full-time student in 1995 to 1996. He completed Part B of the promissory note outside of my presence and without my knowledge or consent. I was not a full-time student in 1995 to 1996. If Mr. Greenberg had been acting honestly, he would have checked the box that said I was a part-time student. The reason why the school had hidden this promissory note from me and not given me copies was because they didn't want me to know how they had falsely represented my eligibility to borrow in the Stanford Federal Loan Program. So in 1995, Mr. Greenberg took this a promissory note away from me, completed box uh, part B outside of my presence without my knowledge or consent, and falsely represented that I was a full-time student during the academic year 1995 to 1996. That's not true. I was not a full-time student. And ultimately, my school rescinded my decelerated program schedule, and I was not eligible to borrow in the federal student loan program, even as a part-time student. So 1995 to 1996, ultimately, the school canceled my academic program in January of 1996. Michael J. Reichgott was my dean, and I was not eligible to borrow either as a full-time student or a part-time student. And I can demonstrate some more details in just a few minutes. Because I caught the school in federal student loan fraud, and because I caught my medical school, the Einstein School of Medicine, falsely representing me as a full-time student so they could take a TAP grant and a Pell grant that I was not eligible to receive, um, five complaining witnesses went down to Manhattan Criminal Court and filed false criminal charges against me. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office and the judge in my case, Judge Simpson, and the ADA, that would be um, ADA Alex Spiro, I've provided all the documentation that they need, plus I'm talking them through everything they need to know to show that I am a victim in a criminal scheme, and so is Mike Tyberg. Mike Tyberg and I went down to the Manhattan District Attorney's Office in summer of 2008 and made good faith, good faith efforts to work with ADA Lenzer. At the Manhattan District Attorney's Office does not protect students. They protect the school and federal student loan fraud and ripping off the state and federal taxpayers for grants we were not eligible to receive.